very, you really, smoking pot, it's supposed to be when you're in your late teens, your early 20s. That's what it's for. Stop doing it if you're older than that. It's an enough already. Enough. You know, I get it that you people can't put it down, but put it down. It'll never be as much fun. Oh, I started smoking pot at 32. Okay, you fucking loser. Enough. It's for children. It's for teens and young adults. That's when it's the most fun. You don't need to be doing it for your entire life. Your mind will melt. Trust me. You just don't need to do it. It's not the move. There's other things to do. And I know this is super controversial because there's a lot of people that listen to this show that love weed. Just, just try try a little time without it. Just space it out a little bit. Take a hit every now and then. You know, you don't, you, you, you stop. There's something weird about being in your 30s and it's like everything's about weed. <laughs> something odd about that. Grow up. You know, drink wine, take pills. Take pills and drink wine. Get drunk. OD in your bed. Die. <laughs> Do something adult for once. Be a fucking adult. Do something adult. Like get a drinking problem and lose your kids. That's what adults do. They don't fucking smoke pot and talk about how disappointing the new Star Wars was. <laughs> lose your firm. Snort your house. Destroy yourself with pharmaceuticals. I don't care. I'm not telling you to be a moralist, but enough with being a fucking, you know, Pothead when you're in your mid 30s. Grow the fuck up. I smoke to go to sleep. We'll deal with your demons. Make peace with the monster under the bed. Defeat him. Be him. I'm just yelling this. There's just a kindergarten class looking at me. They're like, this was inappropriate to have him in. This wasn't really great, you know? But that, I, I've had enough with the weed. Living in LA, every store's a weed store. That's the only thing left in this economy is the TikTok and weed. That's all that's left is just people dancing and, and, and edibles. <laughs> Nobody can live anymore unless they're shoving an edible down their throat. How did we all sleep before weed? I need an edible so I can eat and sleep. What? It's a problem. It's a serious problem. Little Our friend, the kid who runs our website, Little Alex, they were going to start making him smoke weed because he's like very tiny. And For like he, medical reasons, right? Yeah, because he can't like eat. He fills up very quickly and he needs to like blow himself up because he's like this tiny little bird-like creature and he needs to just <laughs> get bigger. So what he needs to do is smoke weed so he just eats brownies and stretches his stomach out or something. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how it works, folks. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to, I don't want the wrath of the weed people here. I'm just saying it's fucking do something adult, you know, and there's nothing adult, but like there's something adult about developing an addiction to painkillers. <laughs> there's something classy about a nice corporate pill slides right down a little Fiji, little Fiji water. You slide that sexy pill down your throat and you just light up a little siggy leggy and you have fun. Stop the nature weed shit. Embrace the Sackler family. Embrace <laughs> Sometimes I wonder sometimes I wonder like what if there are impressionable people that listen to this? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm I'm joking now but I'm also it, Serious in a way, like I, I don't like the, the 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 weed culture is not for me. It's grotesque. It's truly grotesque. People that sell weed are stupid. When you when they're when they're out and they start talking about their weed company, you want to throw yourself in front of a car because, or you want to throw them in front of a car. They're they're uninteresting people. Okay, uh, they just start talking about my friend Michael talking about weed all the time. You know. And he tries to make it sound like he's, you know, building uh, a supercomputer. It's like, will you shut the fuck up? Yeah, people, you have weed and people smoke it. I get the fundamentals of the business. I get what it is. Oh, you put weed in a gummy bear. Now you put it in a meatball. You put it in a brownie. I know what you're doing about it. You don't have to go on like you're Warren Buffett 
of weed and talk about how fascinating. Oh, we got a lot of shops. We got grow a grow operation. Shut up. We don't need your mouth. Shut up at the weed biz. Not fucking interesting. It'd be interesting if you're working with the cartel and fucking chopping people's heads off. But it's not fucking interesting when you fucking tell me you're having a problem with your graphic designer. This fucking kid that we hired, it's not working hard. It shows up late and it's shut up. I could listen to my fucking friends talk about their stupid corporate jobs. I don't need that. A friendship with me requires you to shut your mouth and let me speak. We sit down, we have a lunch. I talk for 45 minutes. At the end of the lunch, you, I hand you, you, I will hand you a script. These are the three lines you're allowed to say. I can't believe you are not more famous. It is a tragedy. Then you also say, everything you do is so good and it's all moving in the right direction. Don't worry about it. It's going to be great. And then I say, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And then we leave the restaurant and I pick. And that's a friendship with me. There's nothing else. There's no, uh, you to tell me about your, uh, the office politics at uh, the weed shop. Who cares? Oh, such, he goes, he said to me one day, he goes, your business is so, you only have to rely on yourself. I have to rely on all these other people. You stop. I have to rely on all these other people. There's, there's so many people. There's so many things. It's so hard. Everybody's, uh, you know, what you gotta do? oh, you got to work. Oh, you got to work. You can't just sit around, get high, and walk your dog. Well, welcome to welcome to the races. Yeah. He gave a bunch of degenerates office buildings. Now they're all fucking like, it's so hard. Yeah, it's easy to sit in Wendy's and sell dime bags to me and my dirtbag friends. Sorry, it's a little more difficult now that the guy, he's like, Every, it's the government's involved and regulate. Hee-haw. It's what it is. You have a business now. You're not just selling ace from your mom's Camry. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. I just know that I'm, I, my righteous anger is well earned and I'm, I know that I'm right. I know that my targets are just and I'm right. That's all. You just have to follow me, folks. I'm not saying you should do Oxycontin. I'm saying, and you can't even argue me on this, it is more adult to be addicted to Percocet than it is to be high all the time. I just respect a corporate addiction. I respect when someone shows up and they're scratching because they're on opiates. Not fentanyl. That's too much, too far. But I respect a, a, a person who's, uh, uh, you know, uh, just addicted to uh, a, 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 a kind of a, a more exclusive drug. That's all. Don't smoke weed all the time. We don't need it. You don't need it all the time. It, it dims you. It dulls you. It makes you even less interesting than you are sober. You're even less interesting than you are right now with the weed. You know? Enough with the weed all the time. Now, we are sponsored by a lot of weed companies. and that Now, this is awkward because I do... I do want to say that everything I just said was a bit and a joke and I don't mean any of it. And that I think weed is great. It's natural. It's fun. It's sexy and great. And I want everyone to do it every minute of every day, every minute of every day. I just want to smell weed. I just want to live at Coachella. Mm -hmm. I want to live in a music festival where everybody's high all the time and nobody knows exactly who's talking to who. What? Who? What? Um, I'm kidding. We don't we don't have any weed sponsors, but I'll I'll, I'll just tell you. You know, I get it. Y your mind gets melted. And you know, I've been addicted to marijuana, alcohol, Percocet, cocaine, Vicodin, but really it led me to Percocet. I've been addicted to all of those things. And you can kick them. You can be done with them. And I'm not I'm not saying that they're all the same, but weed is annoying. it's like an annoying addiction. You know, it's annoying. It annoys me. I would rather you go take pills in your bathroom and I don't have to deal with you and you can, I can, you, we can, you can suffer in silence. Just go to your desk. Just take what you need to and go to your desk. I don't want to have to be in, inundated with your culture of your drug. You know, 
I used to take psychedelics. I never got into the culture of psychedelics, which is like, go to nature, be a better person. I never did that. I would take acid and go to the Garden City Hotel and talk about the fact that the people who lived in the next town over, Rockville Center, hadn't really made it. I'm like, they don't have any real fucking money. Okay, because I embraced the material. Even when I was high, I knew that the material world was where I'd be like, I, DMT, it doesn't matter. I take DMT. I go to the fucking, I go to the other realm. I'll try to sell the aliens condos. I'll convert them. They'll be like, we're all hyper sounded. Be like, will you shut the fuck up? Do you want a stunning estate? <laughs> yes or no? I don't need the culture of these drugs. You can do acid and be a materialistic piece of shit. I did it for years. You don't have to embrace, you don't have to become a better person on psychedelics. You can fight it. You could just take shrooms and touch your friend's dick. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to have any great realizations. You can avoid them. You can avoid those. You can avoid, <laughs> you can avoid those realizations like the plague. I did it for years. You don't have to be a better person while taking psychedelics. You can just be the same shitty person you are, except you see trails. I mean, that's what it is. How much longer do we have? We're at 58. 58. Okay. We got, we got to wrap this up because we have some ads and we have some other things to do. And I haven't eaten since lunch. I do need to eat something. I will begin the keto journey again very soon. The keto journey will begin again. Uh, I've been off keto um, because it is very hard to stay on it because it's very restrictive. Um, uh, but I will be getting back to it very shortly. That keto cookie guy was going to sponsor the show or he fucking, he fucking hightail it out of here. Fuck you. The cookies suck. They did. They got sugar alcohols in it. They make you shit. Can't have cookies. Don't eat. Don't you can't have replacement cookies. Brian Callen saw me when I was on keto three days into it. I was like, "Have you heard of the keto bakery?" Brian Callen goes, "This is not going to work, is it?" I was like, "There's a keto bakery in Santa Clarita." He goes, "This is not going to work." But to bring it full circle, here's what I think about Kobe. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 